Hello everyone, this is Henny and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to start the lecture number 8 of the course MATLAB for beginners and today's topic is working with files. So we are going to see how we work with files in MATLAB, how to save and write to files and how to read from files. Uh, so this lecture is going to be divided into three parts. In the first part I'm going to show you how to save um, the variables so this includes the workspace and some specific variables and the second part is uh, is about saving uh, data to files uh, these data do not have to be uh, variables it just could be any data and in the third part we're going to cover writing and reading binary data uh, for the first part we have to have some something in the workspace so we can say that the matrix a consists of random numbers okay so it's four by four and we can have a vector b it's also random but this is four rows and one column okay and we can have x x is uh, is a times b right now we have three variables in the workspace a and b and x and we can save all of them to the workspace in a file and this file is going to have the extension mat so the file is going to be um, for example data uh, dot mat there are many ways to save the workspace so the first one is to click here just uh, let me just move this window here so that you can see so just click here and just uh, use save or we can save from here save workspace or using the code okay so we can just say save this is a command and we can give the file name so we can just say save and give a file name and the file name could be data dot mat right in the current folder we can see that a file uh, named data dot mat is created and this file when we click on it we can see uh, the details of this file so it so it contains a b and x and let's say we uh, deleted everything here use a command clear okay so using the command clear we don't have any variables in the workspace let's say we want to reload the variables in the workspace so we can just say load and give the file name okay so data dot mat and now we have it uh, a b and x but maybe you want to save just one variable you don't want to save the whole workspace uh, you can just say save and they give the file name so in the file name I'm, I'm going to give it the name a uh, b dot mat just like that and I'm going to save A and I'm going to save B. You can save just A. Save A just like that or save A and B, right? So when you do that, we have another file here. It's named ap.mat and this one contains A and B. And again, you can load A and B. Clear. We can just say load ab.mat. We can use load as a command just like that and load as a function so load as a function you have the the file name here or as, as a command just um, separate the file name uh, from the load command by space uh, i'm going to show you also how to save matrices to uh two files so we have a for example this is a we can save this a to a text file and load it from this text file so we can use this function write matrix write matrix takes uh, the first argument is a is matrix and the second argument is a file okay so uh, i'm going to call it a.txt just a regular text file okay it's not dot mat just dot txt now we have a file if we open it just like that we have the data so a contains four rows and four columns okay and separated by comma and now we can read matrix we can just read matrix by providing that file name txt okay so we have a and it's stored in in ants okay and if you want to store it in a matrix named a we can just say a as read matrix and give it the file name again so it should contain one matrix this is everything about storing your variables inside uh, a file okay so this file could be text file with re, uh, write matrix or could be a mat file that contains some or all the variables that you have in your workspace so this is the first part 
Now we're going to start the second part. So in the second part, you want to save some data to a file. And these data do not have to be uh, in your workspace, do not have to be variables. You can just write some text to your files. To do that, we have a function named fprintf. So the function printf is very known uh, in, in languages like C or C++ or Java. Uh, this function is used to write formatted output to the screen. And when we start with f, when we say fprintf, the second f here stands for formatted. Okay, so print formatted text. And the first F here stands for file. So when we use this function, we use it in writing formatted text to files, right? So the first step is to say F open and then open this uh, file. So F open is a function that takes an argument and this argument is the file that you, you're going to open, okay? So in case you want to write, the file does not exist. Might, might exist, but doesn't have to, to exist, okay? So you can just say, I want to write some data to a file named data.txt, okay? We don't have this file here, data.txt. So this function is going to open this file. We want to open it to write to it. So then we have to provide this flag, w, okay? So w here means we're going to open this file so that we write in it. And this function is evaluated to a value. This value is named the file ID. This file, when it's opened, it's given it's given an ID. So we can store this ID in a variable. And this ID, I'm going to call it FID, okay? So FID is assigned the value coming from this function. This function, F open, opens this file to write in it, okay? So if you do that, we have a file created, but it's empty, okay? So data.txt, if we open it, nothing in it, but it's open now and we can write inside it. To write to it regular text that we can read when we open, uh, we need to use a function fprintf. If we want to write binary text, we need another function. So for now, we're going to use fprintf. And we can just write very basic data. This data is going to be just a text like hello world, for example, okay? Wait a second. We don't know yet where to write this text because this function is writing, but where it's writing, we have to give it the file ID. So this function is going to take another argument. So the first argument or the first parameter is going to be the file ID. This file ID is one coming from opening this file. So this file ID refers to this file, okay? And then we're going to write to it, hello world. And then, da da, we wrote it to it. We can open this file and we're going to see the text, but it's better to close the file first, okay? So F close. And we're going to close this, uh, this file. And how we close it? Again, yes, we close it with the file ID. If we want to close a file, this file must be known by an ID. And this ID refers to this file. So we are closing data.txt. Okay. Now, if we open data.txt, we can see here, hello world. Very, very simple. Okay. So this is the first uh, step in writing some text. Okay, we can just write any kind of text in it, but the use of uh, fprintf as a function is much more um, useful than this because you can do lots of things using the fprintf. For example, you can have some tables and you can have headers for those files. You can do lots of stuff uh, using this function. Before writing more sophisticated data to this file, let's see how we can read these data. So to read from a text file that contains readable data, not binary data, then you need to use fscanf. Scanf is known, is a known function, okay, that can scan formatted text. And then when you add f in front of it, this refers to file. So that means this function is scanning files for formatted text. It scans the file and try to see what it has. If you want to scan a file, you have to give the file ID. Or can we give this f ID? No, we can't. Why we can't? because this file is closed now. Data.txt is closed. And when it was opened, it was open to write in it, not to read from it. So we need first to open the file again. So we're going to update FID, and then we're going to say F open and have the same file data.txt and open it to read from it, okay? Now we have this file and we have the FID. We want to read from it. 
we're going to say f scan f and then we give it the file id and then we're going to give the format specification okay what is the format here is just a string okay i'm going to show you why we do that but basically we add this symbol here the percentage symbol and then after that the the s the letter s and s here stands for string okay so if you do that we get this string and most probably we want to and most probably we want to store this string in a variable so we can just say uh, txt our text equals to f scan f of f id and okay now text contains what oh empty why empty i'm going to tell you why empty empty because uh, basically this function f scan f and f print f when it works on a file uh, it moves so when you use fprintf and we're going to see this we have some kind of a pointer this pointer is moving from one place to another uh, so that you do not write on the same place again and again and again right so for example if you want to use fprintf again after writing this text you don't want to erase hello world and start writing from there but instead you want to move your cursor uh, so that you write whatever you want after hello world okay so same for f scan f so f scan f is going to scan the file it's going to find this word hello world and after that um, the pointer of this function is going to stop after hello world and try to scan after that and then when you use it again let's try to find what's in the text what's in the file after hello world and then it doesn't find anything so it just bring us uh, empty string now how to solve this issue how to read again uh, hello world even after reading it once there are two ways to do that the first one is to use a function rewind so the function rewind is going to bring us again to the start of this file or to just close the file and uh, reopen it again okay so rewind is easier so we can just say f rewind and gives the f id again text assigned f scan f and give it the f id and ask it to read text or a string our f id uh, should be shouldn't be string okay now we have hello world again now let's see how to write formatted text to a file and how to read this formatted text uh, let's assume we have some variables. We already have a and b here. We can just have x as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8. And we want to write some formatted text. We want to write x in our file, data.txt. So to do that, we have to open the file for writing. So the file was opened to read from it. So we need to close it. F close and then FID now our file is closed right now let's open it again to write in it so uh, I'm going to say FID assigned F open and give it the file name so data dot txt and we need to write in it Okay, so now we have um, the ID for this file. Now we want to write in it. So we use this function f print f. So to write in this file some integers, uh, we have to provide first a text, okay, and second the variable that we have. So it's going to be x. But what is this text? This text is some kind of hint to let the function know that whatever comes here has a specific type or a specific format so we know for example that x has elements that uh, are integers we give a hint to this function so we write the percentage sign and then follow it by i just like that that means that whatever comes to this function is going to be integer we can replace i by d okay so i or d means that this is going to be integer and we have to give it the file id okay so file id 
the formatting string or the format string or the specification format specification and then x x here at the variable let's write this and see okay so it's written and what is eight you guessed it right eight is where we stop at in this file okay so we we as i said before we write to this file and we stop at um the end of the file and then we can write after that okay so eight refers to this now we wrote to this file and then we can close it so f close and then give it the file id and done and now if we open this file we can see the text one five two six three seven four eight why that because the matrix uh the matrix x is just written like that so it was written one five two six three seven four eight now if we want to write it this way and then this way okay so one two three four and then five six seven eight we have to write it in uh, a more specific way so let's open the file okay so fid assigned f open and then we're going to give it the uh, name so data.txt and then the flag we open it for writing okay so w and then we have uh, fid and then we need to write to this file so f print f and then give it the file id do not forget this and then the string the formatting string and then the data the data here is going to be x and it's going to be the first row and all the columns and then the formatting string is going to be this one the percentage sign and i i here stands for integer and we can have d instead of i so d and i stands for integer okay so let's try and then let's close the file f close and then give it the fid and now let's see so now we have one two three four if we want to write the second row we do it this way fid is f open and then uh, it's going to take d.txt and the flag is w and then f print f is going to take fid and um, then the string the formatting string and this formatting string is going to be i with some space and then x the first row of x okay now we want to write a new line so it's going to be f print f and just regular text and this text is going to be the backslash n backslash n stands for new line but again fid do not forget to add the FID otherwise this text is not going to be written anywhere okay it might be written to the screen here but it's not going to be written to any files okay so we write to this file a new line that means we're asking this file or asking the writer to move to the next line okay so we move to the next line now we write again the second row of X just like that now F close this file and open the file again now we see one two three four and then move to the next line five six seven eight okay if we want to write um, as many lines as we want we can just use the for loop to do that now let's say we want to add something different okay we don't want to add let's say we want to add something different in a state of the space we want to add tab space for example okay so fid f open and then i'm going to give it the d dot t x t and open it to write to it we want to write to it the a matrix so a matrix is four by four and it contains uh, double values or floating point values okay so we should not use the percentage i in the formatting specification okay so in a stage we're going to use another formatting specification so let's print um, f print f and let's print the first row of a okay so fid first and then the formatting specification and then after that i'm going to give a one and everything formatting string is going to contain the percentage and f f here stands for the floating point numbers and then we can add the space but instead we can just write 
backslash T. Backslash T stands for the tab space. So that means as if we uh, pressed on the tab key on our keyboard. And then we can add at the end, we can add a new line. Okay, so I'm going to add a new line then, just like that. And we can add the next um, row of A. Okay, and then if we open the file, we can see that this is the first row of A, but the space here between this, this element and this element is just a tab. Okay, can we add something different like a comma, semicolon, or something like that? Yes, we can. So let's do that for the third line. So we can say f print f. I'm going to use the same one as before, f print f, but instead of tab, I'm going to, to add, for example, um, semicolon, just like that. Okay, and then we're going to add the third row. Okay, let's open the file again. Yeah, it's here, it's written here. Unfortunately, we forgot to use the new line, okay, but that's fine. We can use the new line again here, and then for the fourth row, I'm going to, instead of adding semicolon, we can add just those dashes, okay? So, let's see, just like that, okay? So, the basic idea for the formatting uh, specification string this one here is to show what kind of data this function is expecting okay and then you can add anything here you can add hello between them right so you can add any text so just think of this formatting specification or this uh, symbol here is a percentage and f as a placeholder for whatever is coming from here okay so you're saying oh this is space here is reserved for the elements of the matrix A and after that you can add this text to make it easier uh, it's better actually to use for loop to do that so I'm going to use for loop now just to show you that we need for loop in this I'm going to create P as um, a matrix of 100 rows rand I, I hear that means it takes max Okay, and it takes a number and this number is going to be 10 and that means the random numbers that are generated could be from 0 to 10 instead of uh, being from 0 to 1. The dimensions that I'm having is 100 by 4. Okay, So this is P, you can see here, a uh, 100 uh, row matrix was four elements or four columns right now we want to write this matrix to the the same file d okay but maybe after writing to it some text okay so f close i'm going to f close it f id okay and then reopen it for and then reopen it for writing so f id uh, is assigned F open d dot txt right oh we have to open it for writing so let's add w okay and then I'm going to write to it uh, the matrix P in the same format so I'm going to use for loop okay so for I from 1 to uh, 100 because uh, it's the number of rows or you can just say size of p and 1 because the size function is go going to give me two numbers 100 and 4 and I want the first number which is 100 that means the number of rows okay so for i from 1 to the size of p and 1 that means to 100 do what f print f okay and give it the file id and then I'm going to write integer there or maybe double okay or some, um, just for now that's just for now let's write integer so it's going to be i and then I'm going to add the tab okay and after that I'm going to give them the, the data so the data is going to be the i here because i is a row number and then all the columns right so when when i becomes one this is going to be one right 
and when i becomes 2 this is going to be 2 and so on okay and then f print f again and then fid and then let's add a new line and you know you don't have to just add a new line like this you can also add after this new line add some text like you can just say this this is the line number uh, oh, the row? this is a row number and give the row number okay so to give the row number we have to add it here i okay but i here is a number and we have to have placeholder uh, for it in this string specification so i'm going to add i okay so i here stands for integer okay so this is inside the string or inside the format specification so it's not the variable i okay if you are confused we can just replace it by d i'm going to add a new line in this new line i'm, get, I'm going to add this text this is the row number the i i is going to be the row number so when i becomes one this is going to be one when i becomes two this is going to be two and so on but we know we have to add something in the formatting specification this thing is going to be the placeholder for this number for loop is going to run again and when it comes to this point it's going to write in the same line in which we wrote this okay so what to do we need to add backslash n again okay so and then end let's see what happens everything's fine yes so let's open the the text we can see here five seven seven eight four seven two four but this is a text written in between okay so this is a row number one row number two row number three and so on now before we have examples on the uh, f scan f i'd like to speak a little bit about the the escape characters and the formatting specification so we have seen that we were using this uh, function f print f with uh, the fid and some text and then the values that I have, I'm having. So let's say X for now. Uh, in the formatting string, we have seen the uh, backslash T and backslash N, right? What are these? These are called uh, escape characters. And there are many of them. So for example, we have backslash P for backspace uh, and, and so on. Um, Basically, most of the people are using the backslash T and the backslash N just to, to have a tab space and to have a new line. And also you can use the backslash backslash if you want to print the backslash. So if you want to print one backslash, you have to have backslash backslash. You can just select the F print F and then uh, go to the help. So help on selection. And here in this table down there, yeah, you can see the escape characters. So we have backslash A for alarm and then um, backspace, which is backslash P. And then um, we have the N and the T and the R. Okay, you can read about them, right? So you can use all of them in the F print F. So this is one thing. And then we saw also the uh, percentage sign with the format specification. So we have, for example, as percentage sign sign with F and also with um, D or I and with the uh, string with S. This is just defining the format that this variable is going to be written as. Okay. So for example, if this is double and you want to store it as double in, in a file, you need to use the uh, percentage sign with F. Uh, and if you want to store it as integer, you need to store you need to use the percentage sign and i and for string uh, you need to use this one with s if you want to know again about all of them you can just double click to select f print f and then go to help on selection and then you will see in this table here down there you'll see all of them okay so you have for example u for the unsigned int and then o for the octal and then x for the hexadecimal and you have for example g for the scientific notation but uh, for the more compact scientific notation with exponent 
and then um, you have C for example for the single character and S for the string okay so it depends on what values you want to store in your file and based on this uh, you choose your um, your character here after the percentage sign right now let's take one last example that contains uh, most of these okay so let me just get this here now let's take an example that contains uh, integer double and um, string maybe one character as well so let's say for example we want to write this statement so f print f and then give the file id and then we have the, uh, the formatted specification here and which might contain some text in it plus the formatting specification and then we have the value okay or the values we can just write here five this is going to be integer and then we can write this number here okay and we can write um, this string or this text so hello and then we are going to write C single character okay so if I want to write some text so we can say this is an integer and then we can do what we can just have the placeholder for it so it's going to be I or D so this is going to be 5 so what happens here is that this text is going to be written and after the colon here what happens uh, the writer is going to see this uh, percentage sign and the i so it's going to be replaced by the number that is coming here so it's five okay so five is an integer so it's going to be replacing uh, this sign here and we can write some other statements okay like this is going to be floating point or double or whatever but i'm just going to write uh, the, the placeholder here so, okay so uh, and then we can write here f and um, space and then s for the string and then c for the character you can see that this number contains uh, several digits like three four point four three four three and so on you can limit the number of digits that is going to be written in the file by adding these numbers we can just say for example uh, one two three four five six seven okay so we can write seven here and what does this mean here so this number is telling uh, the writer how many digits or cells uh, or places are going to be written to the uh, text file so we count seven so one two three four five six seven okay so we write up to this point and this number here three indicates the precision how many digits are included after the dot here so let's write this to the text and see what happens okay now let's see the file so you can see now that the text is written in this way so this is an integer and then uh, when when the writer meets this uh, symbol here with the i it replaces it with the numbers that is coming here so it's five and then we have comma and then after that we have a space single space so single space is here after that the writer meets this text here uh, so it concludes that we need a field width of seven so we have one two three four five six seven okay including the space that we have here and we have a precision of three digits okay so four three four here four three four and for the string it just hello and for the character it just c okay so this is basically how it works and you can see you do not have to pass a matrix or um, a vector here you can just have some values do not have to be variables as well just some values okay so this is all about um the f print f let's now try to read uh from this file okay so I'm going to close this file f close and then fid right i'm going to clc and then so i'm going to write fid again f 
open and then d.txt and open it to read from it right and then we need f scan f right so f scan f is a function that takes the file id first and then the format specification and then the size the format specification tells this function what to read or what to scan for okay and the size is telling the reader how many unit of what is going to be read for example if you read characters uh, this is going to specify how many characters to read um, at a single call of this function so for example if we say c okay we are reading character from this file uh, let's say we want to read this first word this first word is going to be four characters okay so it's given us this now as i mentioned before f scan works this way it's going to read and then stop here okay so if you want to read this again this word again you have to use the f rewind function otherwise you just continue then you can say f scan f again and then fid and let's say i want to read as string so this one is going to be a single string a second a third string okay so i'm going to read the three of them so three so it's going to be is an integers is an integer and then actually in fact this is just a single string because as there is no separation uh, by space between the letter 5 and uh, integer and the word integer okay so this is considered as one string after that we are having double and string and character okay so let me just clear my screen and then I want to read f scan f again FID and then the specification here is just float and just one number. Okay, so it's going to be 34.4340 and so on. Okay, now I'm going to close this file so F close FID. So we came to the end of the second part of this lecture and now we are moving to the third part of the lecture. In which we write and read binary data when we want to write uh, and read binary data we are going to use different functions for opening a file and closing a file uh, we are going to use the same functions f open and f close but we are going to use different functions for the write and read operations so we have f write and f read for binary data so let's open a file now to write in so fid is f open and then i'm going to create a new file this file is going to have an extension pin uh, so data.pin okay which means we are having binary data here and then I'm going to open it for writing and that's it and I'd like to write in it so I'm going to use the function fwrite and this function is going to take fid and then it's going to take the data and the precision the data could be any values so, so it could be uh, some variables that we have like matrices or vectors or scalar or I can just give the number five okay and the precision what is the precision precision here is similar to the format specification but instead we give the data type so we can say for example u int uh, for uh, for unsigned int or int for just integer or integer times four that means that we're having integer that has uh, four bytes and we have lots of uh, precisions that we can see i'm going to show you uh, in the help you can use any of them for now i'm going to use for example um, unsigned end so u end 
uh, I try to open this file just like this. I cannot read what is inside because this is written in binary format, so it cannot be read. It's not ASCII um, or Unicode, uh, just binary formats, which is like zeros and ones, a sequence of zeros and ones. So we cannot read them this way. We have to open them uh, to read from them using the F open again. Okay. I wanted to show you something else. If we open a file, we usually have to close it so that you, we can use uh, this file elsewhere. For example, uh, I cannot move this file or I cannot delete this file as long as the file is open. So if I try to delete it from here, it says you, it cannot be completed, okay? Because it's open in MATLAB, right? So I'm going to cancel that. But if I close it, if I say F close and then give the file ID, right? Then I can delete this one. Yeah, uh, I'm going to write some data again to do the same file. I'm going to repeat what I've done because I deleted the file already. So F open and then F write. And instead, I can write some data here. So I can say three, two, one. Okay, so I wrote here uh, a vector that has three elements, three, two, and one. Each of them is going to be treated as unsigned int. And unsigned int, let's see how many bytes we have. So we go to F right again and help on selection. And I'm going to click on the precision here. So this is a table of the precision. So for unsigned int, I'm having uh, 32 bits or four bytes. Okay, and then uh, for unsigned end with eight, the number eight, this is um, this is only one byte. Okay, one byte or eight bits. Okay, so less memory. Does it make a difference? Yes, it does make a difference when we want to read from the file. I'm going to show you now. Okay, um, because for example, you can see here unsigned end is 32 bits or four bytes. And if you look at the floating points, the floating point numbers, you can see the single um, single precision is also the same size as the integer. So 32 bits or 4 bytes. This is going to make much confusion when we read from the file. We have to have or we have to know the format prior to reading from a binary file. I'm going to show you this. Okay. So uh, as I said, I wrote three, two, one to this file. Okay, and then I'm going to close it. F close, and then F ID. Now I have the file. I have, it has some data. So if I click on it, just this way, I cannot see anything because cannot uh, we cannot read them. But if I open its folder, I can hear. And if I see the properties, I can see the size. The size is 12 bytes. Okay, why 12 bytes? Because here we have three numbers, each of which is stored in this file as uint, and uint is taken four bytes. So four bytes times three it's, is 12. So this is a basic idea about the f write. I can write anything. I just have to give the format. Uh, to the F right as a precision. It's called precision here. Okay. Now let's use the F read to read the data. Okay. So F read uh, is similar to uh, F scan F, but it reads uh, binary data. So first, let me clear my screen. First, I need to open the file. So F ID, F open, and give it the file name. So the file name is data dot bin and the permission is read right and then I want to read some data okay so I'm going to use f read and f read is going to take f id and the size and the precision the size here is telling me how many um how many units I'm going to read. So if, if my precision is uint, for example, so how many 
and signed integers I need to read from this file okay so if I say 3 then this is going to be and then this is going to be u end then I'm having 3 to 1 the numbers that I put into the vector when I wrote to the file okay that's fine and then f close and f id okay so this is how it works now the problem that we have with binary data comes with the uh, precision if we give the wrong precision or the wrong format we are going to have different data so let's open the file again f id f open and then data dot bin reading and f read fid and here i can just write one okay or three doesn't matter but i'm going to write here single single here means i'm going to read floating points that means like something like 3.2 or 3.5 for example instead of reading 3 to 1 so let's see what happens Oh, you can see now it's reading wrong data. The reason is there will be some sequence of digits like zeros and ones, something like that. Okay. The way we interpret these is different when we use uint or single. Okay. So when we use single, the interpretation of these numbers is going to give us some kind of numbers. Okay. Like this number here. And if we use, if we interpret them as uh, just an integer, it's going to give us another number, which is here, okay? So this is a problem with uh, reading binary data. It's not a problem. It's just a property of the binary data. Uh, the thing is that we might read wrong data based on the format. So the first thing you want to do when you have a binary file and you want to read is to search for the format. So if someone sends you some data, in binary format and asks you to read them the first thing you should ask them is where the format definition of this file so you have to know if you're reading uh, just integer data and what is the size of this integer data or if you read um, sing single precision floating point data or double precision uh, floating point data so if you don't know that you cannot really read the file in many situations you will have files that has mixed data type and you need to know how to read them okay so let me give this last example you might have a table of data you might have for example the time in seconds and you might have the day of the month so this is from 1 to 31 and then you might have the month so this is going to be uh, from 1 to 12 so you can see here that time in seconds or milliseconds this uh, could be single uh, precision floating point numbers and this could be integer this could be integer right so if you have a table like this you are expecting the data to be different okay in rows so we can open a file okay so fid is going to be f open and we are going to write in it okay so f open and then I'm going to give the file name so data dot pin and then I want to tell you something if you want to write to the file and use that letter W that means you are going to erase what is inside this file and then and then write from the beginning but if you want to write uh, after what you wrote before you can just use the letter A for append right that means you're going to write uh, after what is written okay so we could do that so, and then we can use the f write remember the file contains three numbers and these three numbers are integers uh, of type u end okay now we can f write to the file fid and then we give it some other data and the data could be 3.4 and then here we can have um bubble right 
this is for the seconds for example okay and then we can use the same function and for the month we can have or for the days we can have 30 and we have this as u int 8 okay that means inside integer with 8 bits and then we can write again the month so this is going to be 8 for example okay so the data are going to be mixed in this file and to read them in the correct way we have to uh, use fread and each time we read from the file we have to give the right format or the right precision now if you could open this file you are not going to see them as rows or or columns they are just going to be sequence of numbers something like that okay until the file ends okay so it's going to be a sequence of numbers without any separations now I want to read from the file so f open fid assigned f open and then I'm going to give it the file so data dot pin and I want to open it to read from it and then um, I want to read now so if uh, uh, I read I know that from the previous the first try to this file I have a vector of three elements all of which are u int okay so I need to write it uh, read fid and then the file name uh, and then the size is three and the precision is u int right So three two one and then we wrote to this file again okay using the append uh, flag so f read and then fid and just one number and double so 3.4 right and then we used two uh, and then we wrote two numbers two more numbers that were um u and eight okay u and eight and then this one and another one u and eight so this one so this is how we read from a file if we if we know the format or we uh, or if we know the precision uh, that we use to write to this file so again if someone asks you to read from a binary file you have to ask them where is the format okay so this is the third part of this lecture and at this point we came to the end of this lecture i hope it was useful and i hope you enjoyed it if you like the content of this lecture please share it so that other people can benefit from it and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet thank you and see you next time